There comes a point in everyone's life where you hit a crossroads. You can commit to move forward or stay stuck in a lesser version of yourself. Well, my next guest knows that pivot point all too well. He's an actor, comedian, and author whose journey and new memoir can't help but inspire. This is Tommy Davidson. Hi, this is Tommy Davidson, formerly of In Living Color, currently the Proud Family on Disney+. Plus. I've been through a lot of ups and downs in life, and I've found a way to pivot around it and find me some emotional balance. Adversity started out for me at a young age. I was abandoned in a heap of trash when I was an infant. But I was actually saved by a woman who ran across me random. I was adopted by her and her family, so I was raised in a white household. The only color in my house was left. I never felt any kind of racism until I went out the door at five years old. We went to play with the kids and they were calling my brother and sister white cracker and calling me white cracker lover. As I grew, we moved to the suburbs. It's the first time I heard the N word when the big white guys came chasing me, saying, kill me. The black guys came and the white guys ran the other way. That's the day I became black. Hollywood has been the best adventure of my life. It only took three years to go from being an assistant chef at a Ramada Inn to in living color. In this quest for success, I have a whole lot of gratitude about the people that came into my life. Whether the influence of was negative or positive, it helped me be where I am. I hit the jackpot. Welcome, Tommy, to the show, man. Good to see you. Thank you. I can go home now. That was pretty good. <laughs> it was good. We got pretty good production staff here. <laughs> got great production, man. That was like, whoa. Me and my wife here are sitting here going, getting emotional, man. We're like, whoa. <laughs> you know, you look at the times that we're in now. Um, there's a lot of uh, social unrest. Um, there are cries for more racial justice. Um, and you think back to your story, that here you were, abandoned in the dumpster, and a white family found you and decided to adopt you. And you say that you didn't realize that you were a different race until you were five. I mean, so here you are in this home, living a great life, they yeah. treat you equally, and it's not yeah. until outsiders actually bring up your race to you. Yeah, and it wasn't until I moved to Washington, D.C., which is primarily an all-black city, where we went to play with the kids, which is what you do as a child, you go look for the other kids. And these kids beat us up, man, and they were calling me, you know, like I said, you said in the promo, they were calling my sister brother White Cracker and me White Cracker lover. I went home and I was like, I like graham crackers. <laughs> What's the problem? My mother said, that's what people your, our, your color call people our color when they don't like them. Oh. You know, I was going, well, what color is that? She said, well, they're black. And I said, no, they're brown because I learned my colors in the crayons. <laughs> and, 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 see, and you guys are like peach, you know? And so when we moved to the suburbs, and I heard the N word. That really broke my heart because this was grown men running at me. It was, it was, scared me to death. Wow. So I went home and said, "What, what are these ends? We got to stay away from them because they're bad people." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it confused me because I grew up in Wyoming and Colorado with farms and meadows and you know all kind of animals. And I see litters where a cat could be a brown cat, but it could have a white kitten, a black kitten, a speckled kitten, or or, or a horse could have a the horse could be black and the horse could have a gray coat. So I figured that humans were like animals. We just were in different colors. That's right. That wasn't the case. 